Amen. Once you are fasting, you are giving a sacrifice. You are giving God a sacrifice. A sacrifice of your flesh. It's a sacrifice. So don't take this season for granted. Amen. Don't see it as a church something. When is the new year? Every church fast and all that. Every, every church fast the new year is because it is through that, that certain kind of blessing. Certain. Say certain. Kind of blessing can manifest in your life. Amen. So we are all officially welcome to our Sunday service. Amen. I want to turn to somebody and tell the person you are welcome. Welcome the person to today's service. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your right and just thank the Lord for this week, the whole of the week. His blessings within the week. His blessings within the week. Shatakataka sata. Mashatakapa <laughs> Mangoro to kopolo boko sataba, maleti kopolo kotos, malete kete peregedes, malete kopolo kotos, maleti kiti palagados. Hallelujah. Say the word of God. Is God speaking to me? Say it again. Say the word of God. Is God speaking to me? Say I am who Christ is. I have what Christ has. I can do what Christ can do. I'm seated where Christ is seated. In heavenly place. See, I am a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Oh, say it. You are not praying. Say it as you say. I am a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Say the word of God is for my benefit. The word of God is for my profiting. The word of God it's my life. It's my mentality. Hallelujah. See, I'm not an ordinary person. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm not ordinary. See, the life of God is at work in my spirit. And at work in my body. See, the Holy Ghost is in me. I'm a custodian of the spirit. See, I'm a custodian of the Holy Ghost. See, see I'm a custodian of the Holy Ghost. I'm not ordinary. I'm a temple of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost lives in me. He functions through me. He sees through me. He touches through me. He speaks through me. I'm not ordinary. The Almighty God lives in me and functions through me and touches through me and sees through me and speaks through me and commands changes through me. I cannot be ordinary. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So last week we started by teaching on the grace of God. I spoke about the grace of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our year, today we are in a year of what? Ever increasing. Oh, turn to some other person. You are, you, are, you are enjoying ever-increasing grace. So you are walking in ever-increasing grace. Amen. And I said, when we say you are walking in ever-increasing grace, it means you are walking in ever-increasing outworkings of the Spirit. That's what it means. So whenever you say, I'm walking in ever-increasing grace, it means that you are, work, you are walking in an ever-increasing outworkings of the Spirit. And when we talk about the outworkings of the Spirit, like what we read in Acts chapter 4, when it says that in so much that multitudes were brought, the sick were brought on the streets. So that if you had peradventure, the Bible says, the shadow of Peter passing by. So there was so much outworkings of the spirit that the people thought that I have a sick person, even if I bring the person on the street, not in the church. And Peter is just passing by. When his shadow touches, it wasn't Peter who said, bring the sick. It was they themselves who seen what God was doing brought the sick to the streets. 
So that when Peter is passing, that is in their, in their mind, and his shadow falls on the sick, the sick will be healed. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is that not strange and powerful? That's an outworking of the spirit. When we say that there's an increase in the outworkings of the spirit in your life, it means that this year you can move from two to 200 by the power of the spirit. That is why he said it is not by might. It is not by power. See, it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. And he says, when he lifts the capstone, there shall be shoutings of grace, of grace, of grace, of grace. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So whenever you say, I'm walking in an ever-increasing grace, in your room, or your, your friend calls you, hello, so how are you doing? You say, I'm walking in an ever-increasing Don't say, I'm good, I'm good. What is I'm good? Do you get what I'm saying? I'm teaching. Am I teaching? Because you see, can you, can you take our seats? Is this not powerful? One of the most important things about the kingdom is our words. Our words. One of the ways to express who we are and give expression to God's word in our life is by our words. So any person who is a kingdom person or any person who is a heavenly citizen who knows that his citizenship is not of this earth doesn't speak like a person of this earth. If you know that my citizenship is of heaven or I'm identified with Christ or I'm a heavenly person, I'm born again, it matters the way you speak because your speaking is a way of expressing what the word says concerning you or expressing who you are. You're speaking. So if you want to walk in ever-increasing grace, you don't only expect that the man of God to come and pronounce that over your life. You also have a responsibility to speak those words over your life. One of the reasons why our mouth is given to us is for us to be able to create through words. Every word you release is creative. Every word you speak is creative. And you see, you have to see that, see what the word says and do that one. We all grew up in a particular environment and all that. But when you are born again, you have to create your own kind of environment. It is not everything that you assimilate. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not everything that you absorb into your environment. When you absorb the things that people say into your environment, you make it possible for those things to happen. I don't know whether you heard what I just said. So you must learn to release what you want to see in your environment, in your life. He says, when men shall say there is a cast down, then we shall say. Why? Because when we say that we are creating a lifting, an environment, an atmosphere for lifting around us. When we also say we are cast down, then we are also creating that same environment. Did you hear what I said? So it matters what you are speaking. So when we say that we are in the year of ever-increasing grace, you have to take it as it is. Your focus on the year, for, for the year, each day, is ever-increasing grace. That is why we teach on the Sundays. We are teaching on grace. Why? So you may know what we say that we are walking in, in this year. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. So that you may know. You may understand what it means when we say ever-increasing grace. Not only know, but release ever-increasing grace in your atmosphere, in your aeons, in your world. Who is saying what I'm saying there? It's very important. So you wake up and you say, I'm walking in ever-increasing grace. Somebody calls you. He says, Charlie, how are you doing? It's been a long time. How are you? You say, I'm walking in ever-increasing grace. You are doing what? That is what you are telling yourself. It's an announcement to yourself. It's an announcement to your environment. It's an announcement to all the demons in the environment. It's an announcement to all the angels in the environment. Angels work with words. I've said, I said, this, that the kingdom work with words. That is why God gave us his word. The Christian functions with words. God creates with words. God 
changes with words. Jesus did miracles with words. God announces his intentions through words. If the spirit of God shakes like he says when they pray, the place was shaking. And he shakes the whole place like this. We wouldn't still know what he's doing. We wouldn't know until he has spoken. So everything on the kingdom thrives on words. That is why as a Christian, born of God, your words matter. Your words have weight. Whether they are ideal words or they are non-ideal words. Whether they are ideal words or they are wholesome words. Your mouth must be a fountain of life. A fountain. Say a fountain. fountain. Springing forth life. How? Through words. These are the words that I speak unto you. The words that I speak unto you. Is that not what he said? The words he was speaking to them. He says they are spirit and they are life. The words that I'm speaking unto you. The same way you can speak words to your things. You can speak words to yourself. This man can speak words to your environment. To all the demons in this area, hear me. I'm walking in ever increasing grace. Do you understand what I'm saying? All the angels all around me, I'm walking in ever increasing grace. It means that we are walking in an, an, a greater outworking of the Spirit. So you're about to get an accident. But because of those words, there will be an outworking for you to be out. Do you get what I'm saying? That's the outworkings of the spirit. The outworkings of grace. So that you do not take the fact that, am I teaching you something? So that you don't take the fact that yes, it's ever increasing grace. Oh, it's ever increasing grace. Then you're just there, oh, it's ever increasing grace. Then when you come to church, you say, ever increasing grace. Oh, glory, ever increasing grace. When you go home, they say, Charlie, they are not going to Charlie, we are not going to when you say Bibian Kosoma, yet nothing is happening in my life, it's an ideal word, yet it has results. Don't ever think the words you speak, because they are ideal, they don't have results. When you say Bibian Koso, you've created, uh, you've created the creative word you've released in the atmosphere. Bibian Koso, Charlie, Bibian Koso. Because you that is speaking, you are not ordinary. That is why a witch or a wizard or somebody who contacts even evil spirits can say, if you tell me, I'll deal with you. He says it. Is that not true? They say it. So that you can hear. When you hear those words, the spirits have started working. The evil spirits have started working. So when you are a Christian and you are in contact with the Holy Ghost, because a Christian is in contact with the Holy Spirit, 24-7, true or false. So the words you speak as a person who is in contact with the Holy Ghost, also are also creative words. Those words may not materialize instant, but as you keep saying that, they will materialize. So when you keep saying Bibi and Koso for, from January to December, by December 30th, by the time you check Bibi and Koso Ampa. And these are not things we are just saying. That is how, what is what the scriptures teaches. It says death and life Death and life are in the power of the tongue. It is a death and life are in the mouth of witches. Did he say that? Or in the hands of demons? He says death or in the hands of a particular sickness. He says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And he that loves it will do what? Will eat the fruit thereof. What is the fruit? The fruit is the result of what your words has released. Whether death or life. So it means that your words of life must be more than your words of death. To that point where there are no words of death coming out of your mouth. Did you hear what I just said? Have I taught you something right now? So make up your mind from today. Every day, every time. Even when you are typing, Charlie, what is going on? Type ever increasing grace there. Type. My year of ever increasing grace. So what about today? What is going on today? Today is a day of ever increasing grace. What about the hour? It's an hour of ever increasing grace. Come and shout glory. glory. One of the things I said last year that yes, I, took, I drew Pastor Albert's attention that during the discussion nobody mentioned it was that I said that in the, the, the Old Testament men, when they spoke, 
They never gave their children money. They gave them words. Abraham gave Isaac words. True or false? Isaac gave his children words. Jacob and Esau. Jacob gave his children words. They did not leave them with money. Oh, I have all this money. Take it. No. Because they know the money can get finished. But the words will remain forever. And be operating. So the words you speak, you release. Throughout the year, you will have them. I didn't hear an amen to that. Very important. So speak ever increase. Talk like a person who is under grace, ever increasing grace. Don't talk like a person who is in Ghana, who is a Ghanaian. Do you hear what I said? Talk as a person who is working or walking in ever increasing grace. You can't walk in ever increasing grace and talk like a Ghanaian. You have to talk like a, 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 a Christian, which you are. Or talk like a kingdom person. Well, at this time, the economy is so bad. Malagadot. That's a Ghana talk. That's a, not say that's a Ghana talk. It's not a Christian talk. Did you hear what I said? Because the one who knows that he's walking in ever increasing grace knows that even in the wilderness, that same outworkings you are talking about can take place in the wilderness. Do you know that Jesus intentionally took people to the wilderness just to show them what he can do? Do you know that? Took them to the wilderness about twice. Taught about three days without giving them any food in the wilderness. The miracles of multiplication happened in the wilderness. God intentionally, Jesus was copying his father. God intentionally took the people of Israel through the wilderness and furnished a table in the wilderness. So it doesn't matter the economy of this world, whether they all crumble. If you are walking in ever-increasing grace and you understand what it means, in the midst of the economy, something big will just pop up. Who is saying what I'm saying there? So, we talked about ever-increasing grace, we talked about grace, and we said grace is the outworkings of God according to his purpose, based on the counsel of his will. And I said, there are three important things that are very important. The grace of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the spirit of grace. And I started explaining what it means to walk, what it, what it means when it talks about the grace of God. And I said the grace of God is the outworkings of the Father, or the outworkings of God. After the, according to his purpose, which was in him before the foundation of the world. After the counsel of his will. I mean, remember I said something like that last week if you were here. That's the grace of God. So I explained what is grace. I explained what is the grace of God. Today I'm explaining what is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The differences. Amen. Amen. Then what is the spirit of grace? We talk about all of that. But I said when we talk about the grace of God, we are talking about the outworkings of God, outworkings of the Father. According to his predestined purpose, that was in him before the foundation of the world. And I said that there was the purpose of God. I said people teach or talk about grace as favor. As favor. I said no. They don't talk about grace as favor. Grace is God's outworkings. It's not a favor. The reason is because we, we have been programmed and planned by God even before sin came into the world. And when God looks at the Christian like this, he sees somebody who is a son. He sees somebody who is his child. He sees somebody who is not under favor. That's how God sees us. He sees somebody who doesn't have to function in favor. Rather, he sees somebody who functions in his ability. God sees the Christian having his ability because every Christian you see carries the deposit, carries the Holy Ghost and carries the depo within him the deposit of God. Everything that makes God is in the Christian. Write it down, it's very important. 
something that makes God is in the Christian. Everything that makes God is in the Christian. God has emptied himself into the Christian. Are you following what I'm saying? God has emptied himself into the Christian, even though he cannot be emptied. <laughs> even if he empties himself into the Christian, he'll still be full. That is God. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? He can't be emptied. When he empties, what, what kind of noise is that? Up there. So once he, when, when he empties himself into the Christian, he is still full. <laughs> but the Christian is filled with his fullness, with God's fullness. So when God looks at a Christian coming, he's not looking at somebody who needs a favor, deserved or undeserved. No. But he sees a person who carries his abilities, God's abilities in him to be able so the Christian is able in the sight of God. He is able to live. He is able to do. He is able to change. He is able to command the Christian. He functions in God's ability in him. The Christian functions in God's ability in him. Oh, I wish you understand what I'm just saying. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So it is not like, you see, the reason why we teach all those things, they say we, we teach them when we talk about grace and all that, because first of all, we check the Greek word, and we just say the Greek word means unmerited favor, undeserved favor. So if you are working in grace, undeserved favor, unmerited favor. You see, and we teach with the mentality of sin. And we teach with the mentality of people who are undeserving. So sometimes Christians think they are undeserving of something. Christians think like that. Pastors think like that. Ministers think like that. They see a great God and a little man. And they see a gulf between a great God here and a little man here. So if the little man gets something small out of the great God, he is not deserving. Have you seen the picture I'm trying to create? That is a wrong picture of the Christian. That is a picture of the Old Testament man. Who heard what I said there? But that is a wrong picture of the Christian. The Christian is not somebody who is a little man somewhere, and God is a big God somewhere, and it's so difficult for you to even know all this big God and explain all the things he does. And then this big God will sometimes just throw something small into the little man's hands out of his own mercy and what? and favor. And this little man doesn't even deserve the toughing that was thrown. Who heard what I just said there? That is a wrong, that's a religious mentality of Christianity. That is what, that is what makes most of, made most of the scholars who brought all the ideologies taught that people are just trying to reach a particular God that they can't even describe. They don't know how he looks like. And they are trying to reach out. And that is the birth of religion. That is what? The birth of religion. When people see a God, a man, and the man has so much problems, and he can't solve it himself, and he wants to get to a particular God who he feels like he can solve the problems for him, and this particular God he doesn't even know, it's just his imagination. That's the birth of religion. Come on, shout glory. That is why when we pray, did you see it? They said when they had prayed, they were filled with the Spirit. Did he say that? They were How many of you are filled with the Spirit here? Speak in tongues right now. Speak in tongues. Now, if you are filled with the Spirit of God, you are filled with God. Now, if God has filled you with His Spirit or with Himself, then He doesn't see you as a little man trying to reach Him there. You didn't get what I just said. I'm just using the Holy Ghost to just explain this. How do you know that the Holy Ghost is inside of you now? How do you speak in tongues? You speak in tongues, lift up your hand and let me see. If you speak in tongues, lift up your hand and let me see. If you don't speak in tongues, lift up your hand and let me see. You don't pray in the Holy Ghost. You don't speak in tongues. 
So that we start a new convert class for you just this morning. Or if you don't speak, just lift up your hands, let me see. It's very important. Don't be shy. Amen. Because as long as once you enter this church, you must be filled with the Spirit and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. But if you are filled with the Spirit, then you are no longer a man trying to reach a God that is big. Because being filled with the Holy Ghost and blowing up in tongues means that you are filled with God. Not a part of God. Not a piece of God. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. So you are filled with the presence of God in you. Whoever I just said there right now. Now, if you are filled with, with the presence of God in you, it means that you are the one that is containing God in your body. Just by the filling of the, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. So if the Holy Ghost is inside of you, then God is inside of you. Not a, a small God. Did you hear what I said? God in his fullness. I said what? God in his fullness is living in your body. He needed your body. I explained that some time back. How the, the importance of the human body. So now the Holy Ghost has filled, say the Holy Ghost has filled me. Say, I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm filled with the Spirit. Says when I begin to speak in tongues. Or say, say when I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. When I begin to speak in tongues, there's an outpouring of the Spirit. There's an outflow of the Spirit. There's an outflow. If that is true, then you are not a man that is trying to reach a big God somewhere. You are a man that is containing God on this earth. That means that whatsoever you do or you receive is not because of favor. It's because there is a superhuman ability at work in you that has been entrusted to you. We have been entrusted to the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost has been entrusted with us or to us. <laughs> Someone shout glory. glory. Are these not powerful truths in the scriptures? So we have been entrusted to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has been entrusted to us and with us and in us. So what God is expecting from us is to use his ability. It's not only the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes, he comes with all the nature, the character, the love, and all of God in you. So when God is looking for his righteous ones on this earth, he's looking at the Christian. Because the Christian is the one who is carrying his righteousness. The one who is not born again, He's carrying another nature. That is called the sin nature. The one who is born again and has believed in Christ Jesus has received Christ Jesus into his spirit. So the nature of God and Christ is in that person's spirit now. So God expects that as who we are, we manifest, we make use of his ability in us. Do you hear what I said there? Yeah. Is this not powerful? powerful? He expects that we make use of what we have in us. We have not made use of what we have enough enough. We have in us enough. True or false? Have you have made use of what you have or who you have you have in, in you? The Holy Ghost, you've made use. You've not. All our complaints, the solution is in the Holy Ghost. Ah, Even God the Father, Papa God himself, his solution is in the Holy Ghost. Did you hear what I said? His solution is in the Holy Ghost. His presence, the answers to our questions and all of that is in the Holy The Holy Ghost is the answer. It's the answer. That is why Jesus could do nothing without the Holy Ghost. Jesus was born of the Spirit. The Bible says he was born of the Holy Spirit. Why? 
He said, the Spirit of God shall come upon you. Did he say that? So he was a child of the Holy Spirit. He grew to 30 years. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, till 30. Then the Holy Ghost came and dwelt inside of him. Before he began to demonstrate who he was, a child of God, he began his ministry. So Jesus could do nothing without the Holy Ghost. The Christian can do nothing without the Holy Ghost. Since no man speaking by the Spirit can call Jesus a curse. Anyone speaking by the Spirit will say Jesus is Lord. So when we talk about grace in the New Testament, we are talking about grace as a result of us. Us. Who are we? We will come to that. But before that, I was saying that grace is the outworking of God. The grace of God. See, so I want you to understand that. I talked about what grace is. But I'll intentionally come and teach you what grace is. This I've not even talked on what grace is. Is that not true? So I thought I just mentioned the definition of what grace is. Grace is the outworkings of God according to his purpose, based on the counsel or after the counsel of his will. And I said the grace of God is the outworkings of God according to his predestined purpose that was in him before the foundation of the world. That is the grace of God. So when we say God's grace, we are talking about his predestined purpose that has now been fulfilled. Christianity is about God's predestined purpose. This is what many ministers don't know. But that is what Paul knew. Paul the apostle. When you study the teachings of Paul and the writings of Paul, you see that he understood Christianity according to God's eternal purpose, or what I call the predestined purpose. Go to Ephesians chapter 3, quickly. Who wants to hear something? Why are these truths very important? Why did I teach you all these things last year, last week? So that you see yourself from a different perspective. You see yourself from a different perspective. Then you know what is the ability of God in you. Oh, if Christians would know the ability of God in them. When you study the Old Testament, the Bible says that when the all, the all the people saw Goliath, they were all running away. True or false? Oh, I said true or false. When the soldiers saw him coming, but there was a man who understood something different. His name was David. He was a young boy. The Bible says that he had been anointed by, by Samuel the prophet. And because of that, the Holy Ghost, say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost had come to stay on him, not stay in him. The Holy Ghost had come to stay on him. Even at that time, at age 17, with the Holy Ghost on him. When he showed up at the camp, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Wow. Yet the king saw himself and all the soldiers who had fought for years. When they saw that man there, they all started running away. Did you get what I'm saying? The difference is what the man knew that he had. That is why we teach some of these things. There is no Christian that is born to fail. There is no Christian. In fact, when you talk about Christianity, when you talk about the Christian, there is no failure in the person. There is no failure in the Christian for that failure to reflect on the outside. When you see Christians failing, because they don't want to learn anything. They don't want to learn. You can be a Christian and stay poor till Jesus comes. You can also be a Christian and move, be moved from where you are at a low level of income. From one level to another level to another level. Until you look back and say, this is the doings of the Lord. Every Christian must, the, the, the ability to be successful is with you. You see, the Bible says in the Old Testament, that, that's why I'm explaining some of these things. So that you can, you can, you can structure, you can structure your mind. Say, structure your mind. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. If you understand these truths 
and put them to work. That is why I said, don't just say, it's a year of ever-increasing grace. Then you are sleeping. Ha, ha, ha. It's a year of ever-increasing grace. Mashoto. You only say it when you see me. How are you doing? It's a year of ever-increasing grace. Man to koloko tot. Is that not powerful? He said, he that is from above, this is above all. The Christian is an above all person. You see, you see so there are, what I'm trying to say is that there is, a, there is a superhuman ability in us. There's a superhuman life in us. There's a superhuman nature in us. There's a superhuman character in us. It's a superhuman something. Because it is of God. The scripture says, for you are of God, little children. You are what? Of God. Somebody said, do you know where I come from? I'm of this place. I come from this place. Where do you come from? I come from God. It says, you are of God, little children, and you have overcome. Why did he say you have overcome? Because the ability to overcome is in you. Sometimes it says, live right, the Bible says. Is that not what it says? Because the ability to live right is in you. See, the, we are not, we, we don't have defects. That's what I'm trying to say. The Christian doesn't have a kind of defect that makes the person to say, I am, I'm. No. Your defect is as a result of your ignorance. Your expression of what? Defects. <laughs> you can't malfunction. Can you malfunction? Kaleto osi atalabaha. Who have I just said right now? Is this not powerful? Who is saying what I'm saying? Who is saying the English? All the English I'm explaining here. <laughs> we are hearing shout glory to that. So maybe you came to church thinking, I am prince. In my family, I come from uh, where? Takurade. In my family, and all of that. This morning, change that mentality. I said, do what? Change it. You are born again. Embrace what God says you are. And throw away what men are saying you are. I said what? Embrace what God's word says you are. And throw away. Say throw away. What men say you are. The guy is broke. Hey! That is what men say you are. I said, How can somebody carry God and say, Those words must not come out. It's because you have said it has come out and come out. It's causing that, it's creating a hunter. It is what? You wake up in the morning. See, these are not things to excite the Christian. This is the Christian life. This is the real. The Christian life is not seeking testimonies. That's not the Christian life. The Christian life is functioning like our Lord Jesus. He wasn't seeking testimonies. He wasn't saying, I like this today, I like this today. In fact, he didn't even watch his luck because he didn't have luck. He watched what he was. You didn't hear what I said. Did you hear what I said? So we say for this Ephesians chapter 3, take us to verse 7. These are powerful truths. These are what? These are powerful truths. The Christian is not like a, 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 a person hanging around. When, you see, when you receive a miracle or when you do a miracle, it depends on what you understand. Some do miracles and some receive miracles as Christians. Did you hear what I said? Whenever you say in the name of Jesus, I command that business to flourish, you are doing a miracle. Yes, Whenever you say, God, when will the business flourish? I've been looking up to you for 21 days now. When will the business flourish? You are wanting to receive a miracle. That is for children. That is for what? Children. That is for what? Children. So when you want to receive money from your father, it's not, it's not, not a child. Do you go to your father to receive money afterward? Say, Daddy, please, give me money. If you don't give me today, I don't know what will happen. The Uber driver will hold me. Is that true? You wake up and take your phone and do pa 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 pa. The Uber driver comes. Is that not true? 
then you sit in the Uber and you say, let us go to the destination. When you reach, you remove money from your pocket. Then you pay. Then you go to where you are going. Nobody is calling you. Where did you pass? Where are you? Where did you go to? Then you say, oh, I'm with a friend. Oh, please come home. Ah, but you a child like that. What are you doing with a friend? Is that what they do now to you? Who is who? Why? Why? why you you, they do that to you later than let me see. That is for children. At a particular age, your parents, even your parents who are humans, know you have grown. You can just wake up and say, I'm going to visit my friend in camp. How do you speak that in Ghana? You understand? I'm going to visit my friend in camp. And they say, okay, okay, okay. They don't say, which friend is that? They don't ask whether it's a male or if your, your, your parent is a Pentecost parent, then you ask all those questions. Is that girl having a wig? Is, the, 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 is that not true? Even after asking all those questions, you go. True or false? Someone shout glory. Who just caught what I just said? Because at the point that they've come to know what is in you, they know that as you are going out, you wouldn't come back with troubles. Is that true? It's true. It's the same with Christianity. We are, we are not people who are, who are born to, to, to mal, we don't malfunction. We don't malfunction at all. We don't have those kind of defects in our bodies. We can't. But you see, you can demonstrate those kind of things when the, the, the knowledge of who you are is not in you. So you are regulated by your senses. All the things I'm sharing with you, eh, the, when you are regulated by your senses, you understand. You are regulated by your senses. You, 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 you just think and do. You just, you just think and say. See, those are all trainings we go through as Christians. If you're a Christian, you just think and say. You just think and do. Whether it hurts somebody, doesn't hurt, you don't care. So you have not come to this understanding. You have not. I'll teach you on that when we get to the word of grace. I'll teach you on that. Very important. This year, I'll teach you on grace, the ever-increasing grace until, by the time I look at you, as I'm looking at some of you in t-shirts, by the time I look at you again, you should have become some kind of person. Did you hear what I said? It is well off. I was made a minister. This is Paul writing. Can we, can we, can we switch the, verse, this, uh, the scriptures this time? Is it possible? You've not worked. All of you sow a seed before you leave. You sow a seed. If you've not worked all the technical media, you sow a seed. Is that not true? Because I really need the NIV. That's why I was asking you yesterday. Do, have you done it? Have you the NIV and the new translation? You said, oh, Papa, we will do, we will do. Now you say it is not there. Is that not true? So when somebody is reading, you, you, you just hear the sound. It says, well of I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Do you see there? Verse 7. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is Paul saying that he was sent to preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9. It says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Now that word or that phrase that he uses, fellowship, the fellowship of the mystery. It says, which from the beginning of the world, which from when? the beginning of the world has been hid in God. So Paul said he has been sent to make all men know or to make all men see the fellowship of the mystery. Which from the beginning? When? 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 From the beginning of the world. So from when? From when? Oh, some of you are you in church? Yes, sir. Can you say it out loud? From when? The beginning of the world. From the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. That means that this fellowship of the mystery is talking about it says it has been hid in God. Go to verse 10. It's so powerful, isn't it powerful? To the intent 
that now unto the principalities. That's why I wanted the NIV. This one should make most of you confused. Amen. Get the newer translation and give the person a microphone right now. Don't, don't slow me down because I'm really prepared for uh, NIV and ESV. So don't slow me. Cry. Say, say, don't slow papa. Don't slow papa. Cry. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Verse 11. Verse 11. Quickly. Verse 11. Just give it to somebody at the back. You don't give it to somebody at the back. Don't bring it to. Is there a way that Pastor Ben will read? <laughs> Come bring it out to the front. Why? According to. Now listen, verse 11. Can you all read verse 11? One, two, go. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you see that? So Paul's preaching was according to God's eternal purpose which he had purposed in Christ Jesus. But that purpose was hidden in God. Did you see that? Verse, another verse. Is this not powerful? Is this not Give me the NIV there. Verse 11. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 11. Uh -huh. Is the NIV. According to his eternal purpose that mm -hmm. he accomplished in Christ Jesus. According Lord, to his eternal purpose, which he did what? He, he accomplished. accomplished in Christ Jesus. Now, this is verse 10. Verse 9. Go back to verse 9. Oh, I want to hit something here. Say hit it, hit it. It says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. So what is the mystery he's talking about? The mystery is God's eternal purpose. So Paul said that he has been called and sent by God to make all men, to make all men see. The word see means to know, for tizo, to know, to come to an awareness, to be lighted, to come to light. That is Paul speaking by the Spirit. That he's been sent to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Now, it says this mystery was hid in God before the world began. It was what? Hid in God. So when he talks about the fellowship of the mystery, the, the, the word fellowship simply means to partake of or to share in or to be part of can you read verse 9 there because I've realized that when I read the King James it becomes big English for some of you is that not true but when I take the ESV it becomes very simple to explain for you to catch it okay Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9 mm -hmm. NIV mm -hmm. and to make plain to everyone and to make plain to everyone to make what plain, plain to everyone uh huh the administration of this mystery. The administration of this mystery. Now listen, wait. That word fellowship means to share in. The mystery means to share in God's eternal purpose. Because the mystery is God's eternal purpose. That which you read in verse 11. That's God's eternal purpose. That God had before the world began. But it was hid in him. And nobody knew until the time where Paul was writing and Paul was telling the church that this is what, it, what was hidden in God. God's plan and purpose. That was hidden in him. Even before he said let light be, he had a purpose in him that was hidden. A hidden purpose that nobody knew. Then Paul said that but now as an apostle of Jesus I have been given the grace to now let all men know the purpose that was hidden in God before he said, let light be. Who have I just said there? Ah, did you get what I said? So, God's hidden purpose that was in him before he created the world that nobody knew. The grace, and I'll come to I'll teach you on grace when it says that the ministerial grace. Grace was granted an ability, that's what I'm saying, grace is ability. And a, a, a supernatural ability, a particular outworking of the spirit within Paul that enabled Paul to assess that which was hidden in God 
before the world began, which the Bible refers to as God's eternal purpose. God's what? Then they saw that I may teach it. And but so, so that also all will be servers, fellowship, partakers. All will have a share in this mystery or in this eternal purpose. To let us know that the Christian is part of God's eternal purpose. The Christian is a sharer of this purpose. He is not somebody who came after something happened. He has always, uh, he has always been the, oh, come on, shout glory. glory. Who heard what I just said? When I said the Christian, I'm talking about you. Say me, 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 me. <laughs> Don't look at somebody in uh, Methodist Church. It's you you are talking about. So when I said the Christian, I mean that you have been part of God's eternal purpose before he started the world. So when God was creating Adam and creating Eve, even though he was creating them and forming them and doing all of that, God himself as a person had a hidden agenda in him. That hidden agenda was all of us here. Hallelujah. And the body of Christ that you see all over. But that agenda was only known to only God. Until Paul said, right now. So take us back to Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 1. Who heard what I just said there? Who caught the English there? If you don't catch it, what you do is this. You go back home and buy a bundle. Then you go back to Facebook. It's live. Then you listen again. Or you download it. Then you listen again. I'll show you why you must know these truths. That's why I say the Christian. When I say that the Christian cannot fail, it's not a failure. Your whole mind will be because you have been failing. So you say, I failed, I failed, I failed, I did it, did it, failed. I did that, it failed. Ah, I failed. Is that not true? What you need to experience what the word says is what I'm giving to you. So if you don't listen again, you cannot, I said it last time, you can't wish yourself to be great. I wish I wish I had a limousine, what? It's not to be a limousine I'm talking about. A Lamborghini or whatever guinea. So I wish I had. Then you do like this, do like this, do like this. It's a wish. Say it's a what? Wishes don't produce results. I said what? Okay, challenge. We say wishes can produce results. So wish right now, let's see. You must build your Christian life on a solid front. A solid foundation. See, life itself must be built on a solid foundation. If your foundation is not solid, the building will collapse. Your foundation is not solid. If you want to build your life on a solid foundation, you build it on God's word. Don't build it on newspapers. Now, can newspapers are trouble? Don't build it on social media. Don't do what? I've realized that the reason why some of you are not able to sleep early to pray at night is because of social media. I know by the spirit. Now, when you have to sleep at 8 o'clock, you'll be on WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. Watch, 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 watch. It's 10 o'clock. Watch, watch, watch. 10.30. Then you want to sleep. When it's one o'clock, you have overslept to pray. The time you should have slept, you're using it to watch somebody's dressing. Can watching dressing change your life in 2022? Yeah. Even you dressing doesn't change your life. See, somebody says, I'm saying, Tumakata so. Yeah. Sometimes you have dressed, but you know a lot of things are going through your mind. Is that not true, about Alfred? Yeah. So don't watch somebody's dressing is put. But this time, the stress is under. He's only snapping pictures to relieve himself or himself of tensions. Yeah. Sometimes you relieve yourself of tem tensions. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the weight of, on your head, you are relieving yourself of, tem of tensions. You don't understand what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you are building your life on that, your friend you went to, uh, what school? St. Mary, so clinical, St. Mary's. So that is my friend. See, she has a dress. Hey. Malatoko Soto. I like that response. Don't build your life on social media. Amen. In fact, don't build your life on your friend. That is why I don't go on all those places. When you see me, then I'm going to watch a message on Facebook and come out quickly. Quickly. It's a discipline. It's not a, it's not a by chance. It's a discipline. I don't watch some of this thing. I don't watch this. I don't watch this thing. I went to watch a message. I leave. True or false? 
It's a discipline. Don't, don't, don't feel, don't want to be in a competition. Can be in a competition, so you look at hey, on, on social media, Instagram, ha, that's my friend. Eh. Malato kosoto lopoko. The truth of the matter is that when it comes to a Christian, the story has never been concluded. Never. Did you hear what I said? You didn't catch that. Pastor, did you catch what I said? The story has never been concluded. Your story has never been concluded. Don't, don't, don't conclude your story. Say, now my friend, he has BMW. He has so and so. Your story has not even started. And we don't, I'm not saying this to pamper you or to make you feel big. No. I'm talking to you based on my faith in God. Do, do you know what it means when you say you have faith in God? Do, do you know what it means? I said, do you know what it means? Yes. Knock somebody and say, do you know what Papa is talking about? Yes. When you say you have faith in God or faith in the Lord Jesus, you don't understand it. You don't. That's why on the 25th or 26th on the Sunday, I was trying to draw you. Some of you have not been listening to the message again. I was trying to draw your attention to the person we are saying that you have a fellowship or you, are, you have a relationship. Even if it's a little relationship, you don't understand. You don't understand. Yes, as I said, I said, he is the only one who can call death to stand before him and say, it is time to judge you death. He is the one we are talking about. You are, you are in a fellowship with. The Bible says, by him all things exist. They are all held in place. So when you, when you walk in the knowledge of this person, of these things I'm sharing with you, you are not in social media competing with the dressing of somebody. It's, it's, it's too trivial. And the hair. And watch. It's too trivial. It's something small. Do you get what I'm saying? You are, you are so big in the eyes of God. And you are in connection with a, a, a big person, so big that even if he coughs, the head, head can shake. So if you are you understand you are working with this ability, you will see that the story has not yet concluded. There is no the end. That's why the scripture says that there is no what the end. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Don't say we are all thirty five years. We are all thirty three years. When we, those are those are those are children talk. Those are what when you wake up and you want to talk, don't talk like that. That's why I said. You are regulated rather by what you are seeing on the media. That's my friend. He just got married. He has three children now. That's the other friend. He lives in UK. That one too. When we were in school, he had no money. Now, he, what kind of when we were in school? At this time, I'm talking about when we were in school. Don't go back to school and rewind the thing. You see, let the word of God regulate you. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't let social media regulate your Christian life. Let the. Did you hear what I said? Because now, all of us just take a phone and social. Is that not true? And that's what it's Let the word of God rule and regulate you. Let the deposits of God be at work through you. Let the what? Let the abilities of God in you be at work through you. You will be shocked that you can move from one to five hundred. From one. You just begin to cause changes. That's the, the, this year, you will cause a lot of changes. I said this year you will cause a lot of changes. It is for this reason. So the story has not yet what? Don't ever forget that. The story has not concluded. That your friend you started ministry with has five branches. You don't have one. The story has not concluded. You are still in the storyline. You are still writing it. We are writing it with our knowledge and our words. We are writing with what? Our knowledge and our words. You can move from one to three hundred. I've said it. I've said it. Eh? I'm talking by experience. You can move from what? Three hundred. Maybe. Do you understand what I just said? Because he says that the one that is born again is like a wind. He says he moves to and fro. It's like a wind. And we do not know where he is going to, or where he's coming from. It means that his life is unpredictable. So you met him in a prison, the next day is a prime minister. You met him as a murderer, chasing God's people, the next time he's a preacher. Have you seen some friends like that? Yes, when you saw this friend when we were in school, then the next day is a preacher. And he's commanding, and you're wondering. That is the story I'm talking about. 
a change, that is the ability of God to change a, to change a thing, to change a snake, a serpent into a stick or into a rod. That is to change a person from being a notorious armed robber to being a preacher of the gospel, winning souls. How can you imagine? Can the government do that? Who heard what I just said? So the story, I'm trying to tell you this morning that the story has not ended. So don't let social media influence you. Let the word of God influence you. Decide to manifest your greatness in a way that you are unmatchable. You are unmatched. They look at it. This guy is too big for us. Now next guy is too big for us. Is that not true? Too big for us. Who saw the scripture there? So it says, for this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me, Paul understood the grace that was given to him as a minister. How that, how the mystery was, what scripture is this one? How the mystery was made known to me, to who? To me, Paul says the mystery was made known to him, Paul. True or false? By revelation. As I have written briefly. It says, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men. It was not what? A, a, something that was not made known to the sons of men in other generations. He's talking about the other generations like Elijah, like Elisha, all those people. All this, this thing is talking about were not made known to them. As it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and members of the same body <laughs> and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Now listen, verse 7. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace. I was made a minister. I'm a preacher. Is that not true? Which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I'm the very least of all the saints, this grace was given. To me, it was given. To preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone. Do you see the English there? Are you reading? Read it all of you. One, two, go. To bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery that was hidden for ages. Do you see that it's hidden for ages? In God. Where was it hidden? In God. When? For ages. Who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the rules, rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Verse 11. This was according to the eternal purpose that God has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you see that? So the whole thing about grace is, is centered not on sin. But the whole thing about grace is centered on God's eternal purpose. When a preacher or a pastor doesn't know what God's eternal purpose is, he can't explain grace well. God's eternal purpose. Say God's eternal purpose. So, and he says that that God's eternal purpose, we are sharers of that eternal purpose. It means that when God was talking about my eternal purpose in me, he was looking at Christ Jesus and the church. Can I give you some mathematical equations? Come on, shout glory. glory. Is that not powerful? powerful? It means that all the events from Genesis happened ah, till this time. Then the bracket was closed like this. Bracket opened. Christ Jesus and church. Bracket closed. God's eternal purpose is that. Any other thing outside the bracket was just a shadow, a schoolmaster. It's a shadow. The Bible calls it a schoolmaster. Who got what I just said? So now, the grace of God was or is 
God's what outworkings of this purpose that he had in him before the foundation of the world after the counsel of his will that is the grace of God so when we talk about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ what is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ it's so powerful is that not powerful is that not powerful I wish I started preaching around the text. Come on, shout glory. glory. They had to bring Goba to church early. Is that not powerful? Yes. I wanted to start so early. Amen. 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 And lead God's people in prayer. Let us pray. I remember many years ago when, when we were at Laboni. I used to be in church by seven. Leading prayers before people come. Magala, Magala to empty chair. And they come. I don't know why we should start a ministry and then I can't come early to come and lead the prayers. It has become too big. Is that not true? You can't be, you can't be bigger than God. So we are leading prayers early. Yes, Every Sunday. Yes, come at 7 o'clock. We start praying. Yes, I said what? Come at 7 we start praying. You can also come at 9 o'clock. <laughs> come, you can start preaching. Now it's a choice. Here's the process that is. It's up to you. <laughs> what you're looking at and what you're looking for, what you want to see. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said what? What is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? So whenever the grace of God is mentioned, you can't mention it and throw away God's eternal purpose that was hidden in him. Don't forget that. Amen. Amen. Whenever grace is mentioned, it's mentioned with an understanding of the outworkings of God. The grace of God is mentioned with an outworkings of God's eternal purpose or predestined purpose that was hidden in him. Because grace has to, now, listen, if I have a purpose in me before the ministry begins and nobody knows, grace is bringing, uh, what I'm doing now is the, is the outworking of the vision God has given to me before the ministry began. True or false? I said true or false? So grace is the outworkings of the vision until the vision reaches that stage where in me I saw that this is it. But until it reaches then, I'll work it out by grace until it is. <laughs> that is grace. Is that no grace? Who understood what I just said now? <laughs> Shout glory. So what is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? And what is this very important? What is this, why is this very important? Why, is, why do we have to understand the grace of God, for instance? Alfred, why do, you want, why, why do we have to understand it, the grace of God? What do you think it will, work, it will happen to you when you understand God's grace as in God working out his own purpose or working out his predestined purpose? What would that do to you as a lawyer or as an oil man? How would that affect you? Because sometimes when we teach like this, people think it's a Bible preaching. They, they can't see how you can, how that, how what we are preaching is applicable to our life now. In fact, it's applicable to the oil you do now. Who got what I just said? Who got what I just said? Because every preaching you see us preach, proper preaching like we are doing now, now, this is proper preaching, this is not proper preaching. Oh, I said, is this not proper preaching? It's an impartation of knowledge. Unapplied knowledge is a useless knowledge. Doc, true or false? You say, I'm a medical doctor. You can't apply the medical. In fact, you fail the exams till 2031. <laughs> and you give wrong injections. But is that not true? Why do you go to all the school for seven years? To acquire knowledge. To do what? Is that knowledge for you to use it to change the remote control in, 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 the, in, in, the, in your living room? It's for what? It's to be applied in the hospital. So once you get to the hospital and the person shows up and says, Doc, and then he me and begins to describe the condition to you. Based on what you have learned, you say, okay, this, maybe it has to do with this. True or false? Let us give you this to take so that you will be well. That is application of what? Of knowledge. Everything you see 
in this world, every achievement, every build, even this building we are in, came as a result of someone's knowledge. Is that true or false? The wig you wear came out of somebody's knowledge. The shoe you wear, the slippers or sandals or the shoe came out of somebody's knowledge. Is that true or false? Those days they were not wigs. Now we have rubber and plastic and the other one. The human hair. Brazilian. We have shoe. Do you get what I'm saying? The shoe came out of somebody's, somebody sat down and said, when I put this leather and that together, I'll be able to form a sandal and I'll name it this. Is that not true? So that people will not just wear, walk barefooted, but they will apply, they will, they will walk in my applied knowledge, the product of my applied knowledge. Who heard what I said? I'll shout glory to that. So what we teach you also is not a vague something. It's not a message that is vague. And you come to church on Sunday so you can hear it and then you go and sit in the house and live your life. No. The knowledge or the message we give or we preach is a knowledge we are giving you. But you see, all the things I mentioned, I mentioned are knowledge that we refer to as sense knowledge. But what I'm sharing with you now is what we call revelation knowledge. A knowledge that appeals to your spirit and appeals to your soul. The reason for that is that all the knowledge in the world you can always have will bring you to what we refer to as a limitation. There is no knowledge the, the world has discovered that is taught in schools that does not have a limitation. There's a limitation with the medical knowledge that you receive there. Did you hear what I said? There's a limitation to all the things, even all the inventions you see, there's a limitation. I said what? Why? There's a limitation because according to the scriptures, there is corruption in the world. The corruptible world has placed a limitation on every sense knowledge that can be introduced into the world and applied. Who heard what I just said? So the man has invented a car. You wake up in the morning expecting that your car will take you to your destination. Nobody crossed the car. No car bashed your car. Nothing happened. All you saw is that when you apply the brake, the brake doesn't work. It was somebody's knowledge that created the car. A product. Is that not true? But there's a limitation on that knowledge or the product that the car has made. So you say, I applied the brakes. I did all my maintenance. It's even a new car. Sometime. Is that not true? <laughs> Who heard what I just said there? So no matter how advanced man is, there is still a limitation on every knowledge now and the time to come that will be discovered and applied to human existence. Because there is corruption in the world. No matter how the inventions go, there will still be. Who oh, heard what I said there? The only time this world will ever walk in a perfect knowledge will be in the new world where the issue of death and corruption has been dealt with. Else, there will always be. There will always be a COVID that is introduced into the system and all men, including professors and Dr. Ward, Fauci, and all the doctors are all hiding to go and running to go and hide somewhere. There's a limitation. There is a limitation on knowledge in the world. So there will be a cancer. Is that not true? And nobody says, oh, this cancer, oh, it can't be solved. 
Once it reaches this stage, it can be solved. It's a limitation. But you see, in all of these things, there is also a knowledge God has given us. And it's a knowledge that is to his privileged ones. The scriptures calls us God's privileged ones. The problem with the church is that we have refused to know this knowledge. You have refused to do what? That when you know enough and apply enough, you can't, you can't be a medical doctor at level 100. True or false? Is that true? Level what? 700. Can you be a medical doctor at level 100? Do you know what you will become? A quack medical doctor. Why a quack? Not because you may not know anything. But because your level of knowledge at level 100 makes you quack. So they are quack Christians. Oh, it's true. The scriptures call them carnal Christians. It says, I have fed you with milk. Have I explained something to you this morning? Many Christians, about 80% or 95%, a quack. Many Christians. You know that by the way they talk. You know that by their interest. You see the person's interest. Then you know. And it's because I've not married. That's why my husband didn't become like this. If that's your interest to marry, is that all you're living for? As a Christian, somebody that God has made, made his home, all you can think about is just to get married. Still at a particular stage. Whoever I just said there. So if we know enough of these things and we apply enough of these things, we may be involved in the medical field, in, we may become professors in our field, we may become scholars in all of that. But in the midst of the other workers we are with, we still have an advantage with what we know. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? That means that you can be a pilot, know how to fly. Do you understand? And have a hitch in the air and don't know what to do as a pilot because oh, at that time all your knowledge is finished. The next knowledge that you apply because you've been applying them in your room I can't die in the air. I'm a pilot. I live with Christ. You've been knowing that nobody should die in an accident. Nobody. You didn't hear that? You have shout glory. When we say, you see, sometimes you have to look at great things down. What is an accident? <laughs> and what? An unplanned event. Is that not powerful? That's an accident. It's an unplanned. I think nobody should die in an unplanned event. Is that not true? You didn't plan that it's going to happen. But you have, see, what makes us who we are? It's not our body, so. We have an invisible person with us. We have invisible beings with us. It's a knowledge. It's knowing Knowing, you may be in the hospital and not know. Maybe like Dr. John is in the hospital as a doctor, he knows all of that. But as a, he knows all the medical terms and all that. But he's not conscious that he also has some invisible prowess and powers with him. Do you get what I'm saying? But when you know and you've been applying it over the years, and you say, I'm traveling, I'm a doctor, but I'm traveling to uh, Northern Region to see a patient because one wealthy man has called me. I should come and in the course of that, there is one or two things, unplanned event, you can be, you will be delivered from that unplanned event. That deliverance is from the one who can only deliver spirits and soul. Who heard what I said there? That, that's, that's what I'm saying. Applying some of these things helps you. Apart from that, maybe you start something. Like the next guys. And that thing you've started is small. It's not working. Things are not working. And you've started it. That thing you have started there eh, must become what you want it to be. 
So, in the midst of the economy of Akufuado and the economy of the Nigerian president and all the people involved, in the midst of all of that, see, let me tell you, somebody said something. Was it like you said? People are saying the economy is as good, but some people are also building estates and they are selling in the midst. Bishop Oedipo said something many years ago in one of his books I was reading. He said that in the same nation where people are wealthy and owners of houses and all that, in that same nation, there are people who are security men watching the houses. Did you hear what I said? Now, being a Christian and being a security man Christian is not a problem. It's not a fault. How do I change my level from being at that stage where I don't want to be to a higher stage with regards to my certificates I don't have a good school I don't have this, I don't have that but even though in the physical you feel limited because you, were not, you didn't go to the schools you didn't go to that, you didn't go to this there is also the spiritual side where you have the wisdom of God with you that wisdom tells you what you should do with your life, even as a security man. And above from what you should do, you have the ability of God also with you. I'm, I'm trying to explain some of the things you can apply. I'm talking about practical, practically applying these things I'm sharing with you. Because you see, we have spiritual forces that attends to what we do. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. We have spiritual agents. We talk about angels. We talk about the force of the Holy Spirit, the supernatural force of the Holy Ghost. But if you don't know these things, for instance, you read a book, of, I, I have read a book of us. Have you read a book of us? Oh, I said, have you read a book of us? Have you also read a book of us? No. I've read the book of Acts. And I, by, by reading, I've come to see certain things in the scriptures. I'm born again. I'm a Christian. And I've come to realize that when you tell the book of Acts, at a point in time, the church prayed. The man was in prison. An angel was sent. Now, when I read that, I have come to know what God wants me to know in that book of Acts. I'm just reading Acts. The next time I'm in some kind of difficulty, I know that when I also pray, an angel can be sent. So I apply that my reading by also praying like they did. So that an angel can be sent on my behalf. Some of you think that because the Bible wrote and the angel went to, some of you, you've entered, you've been delivered by angels you didn't know. Did you hear what I said? Some of you have been delivered by angels. Some of you, your car crashed like this fire. And when you checked and you came out, you were very shocked. Ah, is this, am I still alive? Or? But you didn't know it was an angel that took you out. Or that delivered, or that preserved that car. Did you hear what I said? Through prayer. So, we know the things we know from scriptures to apply them. We know some of these truths to apply them. In your mind, that's why I said the Christian does not malfunction. There is no, there should be no limit in your mind as to how far you can be in life. There should be no limit to your greatness. I've said it before, and I use myself as an example. In fact, I think I wanted to, from the beginning, I wanted to to test the word of God to see. It has been like a test. You can test the word of God to see. And give yourself time. I like what Pastor Chris used to say. So you, you, can, you can set a time for your change. So you can set a time for a change. You can decide in the next three years, with all the things Pastor is teaching me, I'm applying them. I'm releasing words. I'm working in the word of God. In the next three years, I should look like this when people see me. Go hear what I said. If you hear what I said, shout glory. Glory. Who heard what I said there? Next week, I'll talk about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Doc, is that not, is that not shocking? 
Next week I'll start at seven o'clock and start preaching to the church. Come and shout glory. But I want you to learn how to apply some of these tools. In a case when you've gone to the hospital and the doctor says that this is what is there, but we can't do anything about it. When they say we can't do anything about it, what should come into your mind is that as a Christian, I can do something. Not by my ability. I don't know whether you heard what I said. That's what I'm saying. You put the word of God, I said put it to test. I don't know whether it's right, but I'll use it for now. You are putting the word of God to test. You start now. You do what? You start now. Else you see, you will live in that room that you've been living with your parents and keep living and keep living. And when you are 80 years, you'll be like that. And your children will be living like that. Because you, did it, you don't know that there is any other way to survive apart from the environment you find yourself. Just like a person in U.S. who is diagnosed of cancer or whatever, and the person feels that the only thing that is in this world is the knowledge the doctor says. In the next seven days, he will be a dead man. He says, yes, sir. Okay, call all your siblings. Oh, call all the children. The doctor says, in the next seven days, I'll be a dead man and still die. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you can also be a Christian who knows all these things I'm sharing and I'll be sharing on your right to divine health, even your right to healing, without meeting a man of God. And decide that, instead of this thing killing me, I'll kill it in my body. Because you see, the body doesn't determine you. It is your spirit that is you. Do you get what I'm saying? And it is what is contained in your spirit that defines you. So even if you are a security man, and you carry the Holy Ghost inside of you, or you are you have a, you own a barbering salon, and it's like a, a small kiosk like this, like these pillars, like this, and that's where you are now. As a Christian, your movement from that small kiosk to a bigger kiosk has been determined in you. You didn't hear the shout of glory. It has been determined already in you. You now have, I have a friend, I know I have a friend, who was selling iron rods in a small kiosk like that. And those days when we used to share the word of God and all that and pray and all that, this guy would go to a mountain, pray, 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 steady, steady, listen to messages, listen to messages, those, those days, listen to Pastor Chris messages and all those messages. Sometimes I used to buy CDs a lot. Even today we don't buy CDs. Recently I was thinking about it. I used to take a, I used to take a batrotro from Legon and Laboni and everywhere I find myself to secure. To go and look for CD. Do you remember that? You remember that? To go and buy a CD just to listen to a message. I used to save money as a student. Every money you give me, I remember those days. Every money that comes into my pocket. Out of that money, some must go and buy CDs just to listen to a message. You go to circle, you buy CDs, and then go back home and go and play this. Today, we don't buy CDs. Do we buy? It's on Facebook Live. You buy bundle. Is that not true? It's on YouTube Live. Free. As we are preaching now, it's free. You don't have to save it, put it in a CD, and begin to sell 10, 10 CD, 20 CD. It's free. So you find yourself in a kiosk alone. I've said it before. I said that I've never written an application letter to any organization before. So if I talk on the word of God, I talk on the word of God and what it's able to do. I don't talk about I don't. I don't say it on English. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm saying it on practical things. Where you can come from nothing to somewhere. Regardless of your church or your work. So it's not where you work that I'm talking about. I say what? It's what can be worked out. See, if it's about where you work, I can guarantee you and some people like Pastor Nana is my witness because Pastor Nana looks into things a lot. Of, I've realized that many people don't look into anything apart from where they are working. You see? But you have some people who also analyze certain things. For instance, if it's just where you are working and the salary you are receiving, I can guarantee you in the next 10 years, you wouldn't have bought a land. If, I'm, if it's true, say, say I'm, if I'm lying, say I'm lying. Say, man of God, you are lying. 
Oh, say, man, you're lying. And begin to calculate your money. So if you want to live on just what you are doing now, and that's all you want to see, what am I telling you? Activate the supernatural. Activate it. Activate the spiritual now. The cures can be small. The cures can be what? The shop can be little. It may be just be even in your bedroom or in your home, some small corner. It may be even flowers you are selling. Flowers, flower plants. Ato atili palakadosh. If you put the word of God on the flowers, and you put the word of God on the flowers that you are selling, somebody will come and order what is beyond what you have. Through the spirit. Do you hear what I said? So don't, don't sit down and just say, as for me, I'm just like this, and you say I'm like that, and the job, and then, no, don't, don't, put, don't put a limitation on your life. Many years ago, that's what God told me, don't put a limitation on my ability. If you put a limitation on my ability, it means God can bless you as far as your salary. So don't put a limitation. Or as far as where you are working now. That's how far God can bless you. Some of you, that is in your mind, true or false. That's all you do. The salary that is coming in the in the in in January and the, as I speak to you, January money is finished. I tell you. Now I'm waiting for the ending of the month. So somebody says, Charlie, can you give me some money? No, I don't have any money. You know now it's because of the Christmas. The salary is finished. Who who asked you to say that? Where did you hear that to say it? Brother Manuel, did you get what I said? Who asked you to say that? Where did you hear that to say it? <laughs> I don't know whether you heard what I said. I said what? I'm closed. I'm closed. I'm just, I'm just trying to make it practical. Am I closed? I've closed preaching. But let it be online small. Amen. As long as it is in your mind that that is in your mind, that is what to be, that is what to be ruling you. That's what you, you'll be driven by. That it's a knowledge, oh, it's an idea. It's what all the knowledge are formed from ideas, true or false. <laughs> Maybe today I'm t- t- taking you into some social sciences. Amen. True or false. So it's in your mind that then January, hey January, dear, well, Charlie, you can answer. Is that not true? Remove that from your mind. That's what the scripture says. Be not conformed to this world. It says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Say, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let it be retape. When we say renew, it means you are retaping your mind. You see that old, how many of you saw the old tapes? How many of you saw the old tapes? But do you see the old tapes? Did you see some? You didn't see some? Huh? Then you're a little child. In the 90, all the 90s gone, they didn't see that. We are all young, young. But we have, there was this tape that had this cassette, the cassette that had the tape. Then you whine like this, you whine like this. Then you hit it. That is what I'm talking about. Re- remove the tapes, those old tapes. When your friends in the workplace is telling, uh, January, wow, eight, I've been a January, I've been here, the salary. You see, eight, I'm Paul, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. No. no. You say, in the name of Jesus. I said, you say what? I'm walking in ever increasing grace. You say, in the name of Jesus. My supplies are coming from the heavens. How many of you believe, how many of you believe that? There can be a supernatural supply in your life. When you have nothing in your account, there is nothing in your physical account. How many of you believe that? If you don't believe that, then that is why you don't give. Because you don't believe in what can happen. That is why you, you can't express your faith. You should see. Let me tell you how I see. And that is the truth. I see beyond what anybody can give me. In fact, when I sit down, 
I'm thinking about what best can bring to my room. Wow. I'm looking for that one day where best will come to my room with money. That day, I'll put it on social media. Wow. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? When I say beds or fishes or all that, I'm saying where sources that you never expect or you never, you never called or people that you never know or things that you... Have you woke up in the morning to see a cockroach in your room before? Did you see the cockroach before you went to sleep? Have you seen some? How many have seen some before? <laughs> More than cockroach. So it means that you can wake up into, into your room with something. Oh, hear what I said. Unless you don't believe. If you don't believe, you've not studied the scriptures to see what God has done before and can do through you. That is supernatural. That is activate the supernatural. You activate it through your faith. And you express your faith through your words. So you declare in the name of Jesus. If your salary is 500 and it is 500 for the next 10 years, can you get married? Brother. Brother, can you get married? Now, now, have you sat down to think about some of these things before? I remember years ago, I used to, I used to, I used to, I used to sit in Toronto just to go and start at 37, eh? After I've meditated, I don't know what to do. I'll go and start at 37 and watch all the people who are going to work morning to evening. And the numbers, those days where they had not done the place like this, numbers of people. And I'll be wondering in my mind, so all these people who go and come every day throughout the year, do they, do they receive what their visions are throughout the year? Or is this that it is a requirement? It is a requirement to work, the Bible says. Did you hear what I said? But there are also provisions that God has made. Now, the provision can come with a greater job. It's possible. It can come with a different vision. It can come with a supply. Financial supply. Don't just live your life on this person or this person. My husband will be the one to take care of me. Or my wife will be the one to take care of me. Take your mind beyond that. I said what? Remove limits. Open your mind to the word working. As to where the word and the spirit will work and produce certain results in your life, it's not up to you. It's only up to you to release and have faith and work with the spirit. It says, as a child is formed in the womb and the child forms bones and we do not know how. Is that not what the scriptures say? <laughs> Have I taught you something this morning? I think I've taught you too much. You must sow a seed for that. 2021 is 22 to receive. This is the right time. So I receive, I'm walking in ever increasing grace. So don't forget this. The Holy Ghost wants me to, to emphasize on this. Don't forget this. Don't place a limitation on your life. Say it. Say, I'm not placing a limitation on my life. Because I'm not an ordinary person. Because I have a backing. I have a supernatural backing. I have a supernatural person who is in me, who is capable of doing anything when I express my faith in him so he can supply anything through me. He can cause any change. Sometimes when I meditate on the scriptures and I sit down, I'm like, sometimes I, you want to enter a place. Look at me standing there. Have you seen me standing like this? Inside of me is the Holy Ghost. Fully. There's no Holy Ghost, there's no part outside this full. <laughs> so when you pray in the Holy Ghost like this, you went you, you want to enter into your, your workplace with this fullness, with the influence of this fullness. And make him cause a change through you. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Some of you after today you'll be growing some inches tall. Amen. Some will be growing some inches short. Is that not powerful? Say, I'm not an ordinary person. So don't put a limitation on your life. That's what I'm telling you. It doesn't matter where you work. It doesn't matter how much you are receiving. It doesn't matter what you are not doing now or what you want to do now. Anything is possible. Tell us, say anything is possible. This year, 2022. Oh, the way you are saying it, you are saying as if you, you are not... You, you want to just go home and sleep. 
Say this year 2022. Anything is possible through the outworkings of grace or through the outworkings of the Spirit or through the grace of God at work. No, I'll say grace of God because I've not taught you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Or through the Spirit of grace at work. Anything is possible. You can wake up pregnant. You can wake up. You don't, you don't need all the systems. Don't, 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 don't follow the systems. That is why you are, don't follow the system. I said what? You wake up, you say we are going to buy a land. You wake up, you say we are going to do this. You say, how do you do? How is this possible? Have we not done that ever and over again? But have we not done that over and over again? We wake up the next day, we say we've got a vision, let us do this. We say it's not possible, Papa. When we look at the whole system, it doesn't look possible. That's what happens. How we will move from this place? After I said, our movement from this place to any other auditorium on this earth is exponential. I didn't hear an amen to that. Exponential. Don't play. If when I know this person and this person know me, you can know somebody and you call and it doesn't pick your call again. In fact, when that your friend knows that you are calling because of a favor, you won't pick. True or false? So put that guy aside and put the Holy Ghost in front. Do you get what I'm saying? He's able to see, as we are all here, maybe God wants somebody to help you go out for it, true or false. But that person to help you, you may not know the person. You may not even know where the person is located. But even though you don't know, as a Christian, filled with the Spirit, the Holy Ghost knows. That's the advantages we have. The only one who can turn the heart of Brother Alfred to remember Sister Alfreda is the Holy Ghost. This is we say it like this. It looks, it looks. I was, I was, I was sharing the last time I shared the testimony about some of this, some of these things. But some of these things happen. True or false? Yeah. Where you don't know anybody, you say I don't know him from anywhere. I just met him. I'm not talking about meeting a 419 person. May you never meet a 419 person. Amen. May you also never meet a 419 guy. Amen. Those of you in a relationship, don't meet a 419 guy. I see some of you have started meeting 419 guys. Amen. May you never meet a 419 lady. Don't meet 419 guy. Do you know the 419 guys? They're not after marriage. They're 419. Amen. It's very important. May you meet the right... Lift up your right hand. Before we take our offerings right now. Before we take our offerings for two minutes. One of the prayers I used to pray, I used to pray for many years, was these prayers. May you never meet the wrong person at the right time. May you meet the right person at the right time through the Holy Ghost and do the right thing at the right time. You tell them, just say it. I'm meeting the right person at the right time. I'm meeting the right person at the right time. I'm meeting the right person at the right time. I'm meeting the right person at the right time. I'm doing the right thing at the right time. I'm going to the right place at the right time. Through the Spirit, the right things are happening to me at the right time. I will not find myself in the wrong place at the right time. Doing the wrong thing at the right time. Mashota. This year, 2022, by the grace, by the grace, by the ever-increasing grace, I'm meeting the right person at the right time. I'm making the right decision at the right time. I'm doing the right thing at the right time. Mashata, Makolo Kotoya, Ilege de Gedesh, Rabalagadagadosh, Lege de Gedesh, I'm at the right place at the right time. Doing the right thing at the right time. Meeting the right people at the right time. Mashata Kapa. Come on, shout glory. Shout hallelujah. This is a very important prayer you've prayed like that. I've seen people who are at the wrong place at the right time. 
People have been doing, who, are, who were doing the wrong thing at the right time. Did you hear what I said? There were even people who were at the wrong church at the right time. The wrong meeting at the right time. You are at the wrong meeting at the right time. You say, ah, I didn't know. The time passed by. Did you hear what I said? So be always guided by the Holy Ghost. And be at the right place at the right time. And do the right things at the right time. Through the Holy Ghost, you would know. Through the Holy Ghost. And you'll be shocked what will happen. And some people are not able to endure where they were. They left. When they were looking for the place, it was not there again. I've met people who said, Papa, I want to even leave my job. And I said, don't leave that job yet. Wait, wait, wait. That leaving is a wrong timing. But in your mind, it is a right. By the time you leave, you don't have any work to do again until the next five years. Have you not met some like that? Oh, Pastor, have you not met some like that? They were at the wrong place. They were at the right place at the wrong time, the wrong place at the right time. It became difficult for them to get another thing to do. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. In U.S. somewhere. Or some country somewhere. They said, we are coming, we are coming. They said, don't come, stay there, stay. They said, no, 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 we can't stay. Ah, but you in here, we are the one in the U.S. and the U.K. You are in Ghana, you are telling us to stay. Do you know what you are going to? And they came and nothing has worked since then. Do you hear what I'm saying? There are some you say, oh, stay, stay, then they stay. I have a lot of testimonies like that. I don't want to share all of that. Sometimes when I share the testimony, some of you, you hear it, but it passes through, especially when you are in a hurry to leave. Amen. So say, I'm, by the grace of God, by, the, by ever increasing grace, I'm at the right place at the right time. In the name of Jesus. Doing the right thing at the right time. I will not miss my seat. No. Through the Holy Ghost, I'll be at the right place. In the name of Jesus. There are people who have gone to US and UK who are struggling more than those in Ghana because they are the wrong place. There are some too who have come to Ghana who should have not come. Who have I just said? Receive grace in Jesus' name. So it's offering time. How many have you been blessed today? How many have been blessed today? Is that not powerful? Apply, start applying. The best way to begin to apply this knowledge is through your words. Start from there. Later you know what to do. Learn to stretch forth your hands. Learn to do what? It's very important. Can we please be outstanding? Is that not powerful? Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus.